you're you're working with some really talented folks that have made great television before. Like, well, that being said, look, you, anytime you talk about heavy makeup, a character like the ghoul, there's got to be a little trepidation, I would imagine. Like, what I mean, and I know you started the shoot in full on ghoul before you went into the Cooper aspect of the character. Like on day five of the ghoul, are you like, oh, fuck, get my team on the line. Like, what did I do? This is exactly my worst nightmare. I'm going to be in this makeup forever. I mean, what, did you have those moments? Yeah. You know, I not not on day day five, day one, really. But it, yeah. but I'm not the I'm not the person who would ever say, you know, get my 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 team on the on the phone. I'm just I'm not that guy. Right. You right. bought the ticket, so you take the ride, right? But yeah. there was, uh, and I and I've said this in, in other interviews. The the first day that we did it, it was like 106 degrees in New York um, with um, you know the heat index, yeah. and. Uh, and I was in this makeup. We walked out for the first time, knowing that we're going to work. Right? This is this is it. I'm going on camera, and and I have all of the stuff on, and I have all of the stuff on with all of the clothing on for the first time, the very first time where everything was on all at once, and and I'm walking, and I'm and I, and I'm, I know how to walk with spurs, man. Like, but I can't I can't really see my my. My peripheral vision is is uh, compromised, and and I'm just kind of making my way down and kind of understanding like I don't even know this is oh my god I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail these people who believed in me I don't I don't know how to how to do this and then we got right before we were going on my buddy Jay Garber who did my makeup and is a very 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 dear friend of mine and one of the best visual makeup artists in the and the and the and the business handed me the last piece of equipment that I needed uh, to do in order to go on camera, right? And it was these two um, um, not braces, but these two retainers that right. go over my teeth. And I realized I never even tried to talk with these things in my mouth, and I'd certainly not tried to talk with. There's two pieces of. Uh, you know, prosthetic that are holding your lips apart and you get no saliva in your mouth and your eyes are kind of open and there's no uh, moisture in, in your eyes other than the sweat that's pouring out from underneath the piece. So I, it was kind of all of it. And, uh, and then we did the first couple of takes and uh, there was a break in between and, and I, and I was so hot. I, I sat down on, on this log that was there. And again, I, Josh, I've said this in other interviews, but I did genuinely say, I don't know if I can, I can do this. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I can. And you're standing, this is day one and you're looking at Mount Everest and, uh, and it's like, I didn't bring the right shoes. <laughs> so, so I, can't, I can't make it up this hill, but, but then, you know, you just relax into it. Don't you? And, uh, and you don't complain and you just keep your head down and one foot in front of the other. And that's one of the greatest lessons. I wonder if you feel that way about an interview. You know, as an interview, like the, your first, the first time you interviewed somebody, it's like, okay, well, that question was good. This yeah. question was good. I was listening here, but now what else do I have to say? 100%. Um, that's how I feel about every job. It's like, okay, all I got to do is focus on the next step in front of me. There are some stories about my uncle's life, one particular uncle's life that I find truly always funny and heartfelt and wonderful. I never get tired of hearing them from hilarious to heartfelt, tear jerking to plot twisting. His retelling of the events of his life always brings me joy. And just in time for Father's Day, I found the perfect gift that captures all his stories for my family forever. It's called StoryWorth. StoryWorth helps you preserve precious memories and stories from your father or your grandfather's life for years to come. Here's how it works. This is so cool. Each week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question that you get to help pick. There are dozens upon dozens of cool questions. Their favorite teacher growing up, their favorite movie growing up, their TV show, all of these spawn these great answers. And StoryWorth makes the writing process a breeze. All your loved one needs to do is respond to that email with a story. It can be long or short, it really doesn't matter. You'll be emailed a copy of your loved one's response as they're submitted over the course of the year. You'll get to enjoy their retelling of the stories you already know, or be surprised by stories you've never heard before. After that year of fun, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories and photos into a beautiful keepsake hardcover book 
that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. You could even keep a copy of the book for yourself. This for me is gonna be a perennial. Every year, if not multiple times a year, I'm gonna come back to this book and I'm gonna share it with my family and the next generation. Families love StoryWorth. That's why it has more than 25,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot with millions of stories preserved since they were founded over 10 years ago. Give all the fathers in your life a unique, heartfelt gift you'll all cherish for years. Story worth. And right now, you can save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash happy sad. That's storyworth.com slash happy sad to save $10 on your first purchase.